So Dimitri, you made a learn module that's all social good focused. Tell me about it. Well, my uh, social good module is focused on creating a chatbot, uh, a responsible AI chatbot, because uh, it's important when creating a chatbot, it's important to uh, make sure that it follows the certain rules so that people uh, do not feel negative about interacting with it. Um, like, uh, for example, the bot should not pretend to be a human being, because uh, if it does, then we will get some negative uh, uh, negative feelings from high expectations in the beginning um, like the bot should um, uh, support different uh, conversational styles and things like that so in my module i start with an overview of uh, those principles like what makes a good chatbot and then uh, i pretty much uh, go into creating a chatbot from the beginning. I focus on education because uh, in the time of the pandemic, it's important to look for new remote ways of education and chatbot can uh, provide some additional learning experience. So the idea is that we are creating uh, basically an assistant uh, which would help people learn something. And in my uh, module, I take geography as an example. So this bot would know a little bit about geography, uh, like capitals of uh, different countries. It would know the population of different countries and uh, a few terms. So not too much because the learn module is not like something really huge. Uh, we cannot expect like people to create the complete like teaching assistant uh, in a few lessons, but uh, uh, it shows uh, different building blocks of a good chatbot. So uh, when uh, creating uh, uh, the, the system to answer the questions about population and capitals, I uh, use um, Lewis. Uh, Lewis is a Ooh, cognitive Lewis. Just, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, it basically allows uh, us to extract the meaning, the intent from the text, and then provide the answer programmatically. So it contains the built-in table for countries and uh, capitals and population, and, uh, and then it's programmatically figures out the response. And then I also use Q&A Maker for uh, terminology, like a person can ask what is a continent, uh, what is a country, uh, and so on. Like, I love Q&A Maker. It's one of my favorite kind of magic chatbot makers, because literally you just upload a PDF of a Q&A file. It's so easy. <laughs> Right, yeah. The idea was to uh, put different services together to get some kind of nice experience uh, well, almost out of the box because it's uh, like in one learn module you could do like everything, like from uh, setting things up uh, in the cloud, uh, connecting it to uh, some uh, chatbot channels like Telegram and uh, implementing those two uh, services, using those two services to implement basic chat functionality. And what also Q&A Maker, by the way, can provide is a kind of generic chat about uh, everything, like small, small talk. Uh, it's handled because in Q&A Maker, it's just uh, you, you put the checkbox and you say, I want to handle the small talk. And uh, it automatically adds the number of uh, phrases. What I love about this project is, you know, back when I was in school, back in the day, we would use little flashcards to study and, you know, try to remember different capitals or concepts or, you know, what different colors made different colors. And it seems like with Q&A Maker, you could technically put the questions and answers to whatever you're studying into Q&A Maker and then have more of a conversational typing way to be able to study these things. Right. Well, I had a uh, while working on this bot i had an idea of uh, incorporating a game uh, for example when you can guess uh, well not guess but when you can uh, answer what is the flag like what country is this flag oh. what, what the flag corresponds to because i also uh, collected all the flags but i think it was not included in the module because of the constraints you know that that creates a little bit more uh, complicated logic so that would probably be a good topic for an extension for a continuation of this learn module um, yeah, but I think that that sounds uh, good because you can implement the functionality of a flashcard game inside the bot. That's I think the bots are very uh, well suited for that. So I've played uh, a little of... bit with Lewis, but maybe for some folks who are watching who are thinking, who's this Lewis guy? Could you explain a little bit what Lewis is? 
Right. So when uh, creating an intelligent bot, uh, it consists, uh, I mean, the bot uh, behavior consists of two parts. First, it tries to understand uh, what the person is talking about and then uh, reacting somehow to this. And the, the first part, understanding part, is handled by Lewis. So essentially, uh, people do not talk in the very specific phrases. Like it's not a command uh, line, like when you type in a command, uh, a person can say, different things and Louis tries to uh, recognize the intent originally when creating a bot we need to think about different uh, uh, things person can talk to a bot uh, those are called intents uh, we install all of them and then for each intent we provide the number of sample phrases hmm. and uh, uh, Louis trains the model which uh, parses the input and tries to uh, find the closest intent and it also gives the like probability how uh, likely this intent is, and so on. So it's very easy to 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 train this uh, with this called intent classification model. It's very interesting because when you think about language, there's so many different ways that you can ask a question or say something. So playing with Lewis has always been very fascinating to me. I think the first example I ever saw was. Um, a Disneyland or a Disney World uh, question and answer where there's so many ways to ask how long is the wait for blah, 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 or, you know, how far do I have to walk for X, Y, Z? Um, so Lewis has been a really fun thing to play with, especially as I start uh, get started with machine learning and, and AI, because in a way we're kind of training this bot to help respond to what we need it to answer. <laughs> Right. Well, the great thing about Lewis is that it's a complete experience uh, uh, together with the control panel. And uh, in fact, uh, when you're creating a real chatbot, you never get things right in the first place because uh, you cannot think of all possible phrases people can invent. So uh, normally you would collect uh, like phrases uh, from the users and then retrain the model periodically. And Lewis can do that for you because it uh, collects all the phrases and then you can just go into the web interface and you classify them and uh, the model is almost automatically retrained oh, and it becomes nice. better. So this, this process is really simplified and that's something you almost always want to do because uh, really on the, on the first attempt, uh, we should not like, I mean, Louis, when you start playing with it, it looks quite nice. But then when you start putting it into practice, you realize that you really need, you know, some uh, experience with real people and uh, several iterations to come up with a really good model. Yeah, you kind of have to hold Lewis's hand for a little bit, teach teach him the way <laughs> the way that people speak. And I imagine that each different culture and each different language is different. We all have slang and we have different ways of abbreviating things. So I'm sure as a human working with Lewis, you learn a lot, not only about how your users are interacting with Lewis, but maybe there's even questions that you're not even accounting for that you have to write in answers for. So it's kind of a, looking taking a peek behind the curtain with with machine learning and ai <laughs> yeah what also Louis can do by the way it's a target that uh i don't know how many languages it supports now i mean it's not the full stack i know that for example russian my own language is not supported and there are a few ways you can try to go around this but uh support the language natively is a very complex process because Louis can also recognize um, so-called built-in entities like when you're speaking about dates or times those phrases are automatically recognized and those are naturally very different in different languages you can yeah. say 12 a.m or you can say in 24-hour format and so on so um yeah those are very language specific or for example geographies Louis can know how to recognize a piece of geography like a city name um or country name, those kind of things. Figuring out what person is saying is one part of what Louis does. And another thing is called uh, entity extraction, when it extracts those kind of uh, entity semantic uh, groups, like dates, uh, names, uh, places, uh, times, and those kind of things. Interesting. So it's intelligent enough to kind of pick up on those things and realize, oh, someone's asking about a time, so let's categorize it as that. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe and that's it's very easy because projects. you can say, <laughs> yeah, you can say something like the day before yesterday or the day after tomorrow, and those things are also uh, categorized as uh, date time. Ooh. So, for example, when you want to say like put an alarm for twelve o'clock the day after tomorrow, it would figure out that it's, it refers to a date. Very yeah. cool. Ooh, I'm thinking of some fun projects now. I want to use this for. <laughs> so if people come and complete your learn module, they're going to learn. They're going to play a little bit with Lewis. They're going to learn kind of the makings of a chatbot. Um, what else are they going to learn when they come and complete your module? 
Well, they would learn pretty much end-to-end -end scenario for building a chatbot from scratch. So um, this bot is limited in functionality, but all the core concepts are there. They would also learn how to interact with the bot in the more uh, in a richer way, like uh, using pictures, like how to send a picture to a bot, how to make bot uh, put the picture as a response, those kind of things. So they would be ready pretty much to build anything. Uh, provided they have some knowledge of programming. Uh, I'm using the bot framework uh, based on C-sharp on .NET. So that's that's the main language, but also uh, bot framework supports, uh, I think, JavaScript uh, and even Python. Even though the Python is not uh, as well documented at the moment, it's kind of uh, a work in progress, but it's still uh, very good to know that you can use Python for developing bots. Very fun. Yeah. So today I learned that I can build my own chatbot to build my own flashcards that I can train myself and then use to study. So thank you so much, Dimitri, for, for sharing with us your learn module today. Thank you.